All right, here we go with part, right, four. Yay. Which of the following is true about the student's T models, right? Uh, they are unimodal, symmetric, and bell-shaped. Yes, because it's very much like the normal model. They have fatter tails than the normal model. That is absolutely true. Um, to account for the smaller sample sizes having more variation. And as the degrees of freedom increase, the T models looks more and more and more like normal. Well, that was the basic point that I made. Um, and this is why when you have a sample greater than 30, uh, skewness is kind of okay uh, because the T model looks more and more normal. So all three of these actually work. And so the answer here is B, and that makes us happy. Okay, 16. Wow, 16 is a really long problem, but let's try and get through it. Okay, so uh, to plan the course offerings for next year, a university department dean needs to estimate what impact the No Child Left Behind legislation might have on teacher credentialing. Historically, 40% of this university's pre-service teachers have qualified for paid internship positions each year. So this is sort of our null hypothesis, okay? The Dean of Education looks at a random sample, random sample is really important, of the internship applications to see what proportion indicate the applicant has achieved the content mastery that is required for the internship. Based on these data, he creates a 90% confidence interval of 33 to 41. Could this confidence interval be used to test the hypothesis that P is equal to 40 versus P is less than 40 at the 0 0.05 level of significance. Now, usually what we would think is that with a 90% confidence interval, with a 90% confidence interval, we would be looking at a 0 0.10, all right? Um, but he's only using a one-tail test. He's only using a one-tail test. And so because he's using a one-tail test, the, the point 10 actually um, goes with a two-tail. Okay. Um, and so the point zero 0.05 is going to go with the one-tail. Now, we do not deal with this very much um, because... We use the calculator but this is what's happening right so it I've got 10% in two tails so I only have 5% in one tail so I can test this one-sided one-tailed uh, alternative hypothesis so if I look at E I want to get rid of E because the Dean um, didn't actually have to use the 95% confidence interval unless he was doing a two-tail test okay now 40 is in here. 40 is in here. Okay. So we would not reject this. Okay. Um, we're looking for a fails to reject. So here is a fails to reject. Um, do, do. He, oh, he accepts the null hypothesis in D. Do we ever accept the null hypothesis or do we fail to reject? Right, so D is out because the language is bad. All right, so um, let's look at C. Yes, since 40%, could this confidence interval be used to test the hypothesis? So yes, absolutely this interval could be used. So B, no, is gonna be crap, okay? Um, yes, since 40% is not in the center of the confidence interval, he rejects the null hypothesis. No, 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 no. We're gonna fail, right? fail to reject the null hypothesis. Okay, so that is no bueno. All right, so that's no bueno. Uh, yes, since 40% is in the confidence interval, he fails to reject the null hypothesis, concluding there is not strong evidence of any change in the percentage. And this is the correct answer right there, and that makes us happy, okay? I know I kind of skipped around these a little bit more than I normally do, uh, but I felt like because of the one tail, two tail, I wanted to address a couple of things earlier. All right, so there we go. Uh, 17. I realized there were some questions in class about this one. 
Uh, based upon data from two very large independent samples, two students test a hypothesis about the equality of population means using alpha of 0 0.02. One student used a one-tail test and rejected the null hypothesis, but the other used a two-tail test and failed to reject the null hypothesis. Which of these might have been their calculated value of t? Okay, so for 17, basically what we're doing is we're, we're looking for a T, right, score that's on the edge, right, of <clears throat> 98 and 99%, right, because that's what we're talking about. When you have the one-tail test, you're going to have 2% in one of the tails, right, versus 2% in both of the tails. And so you're talking about the difference between 98% and 99% confident. Now, it is two very large independent samples, which means that we could use a z-score here, all right? <clears throat> now, if you look at your table, right, 99 has a Z critical Z score of 2.58, all right? And so 266 is gonna be further away than that for both of them. For the 98%, right, you've got 2.33, okay? So this is a, this is a little bit less than, than, the, than the 98, but remember, this is a T score. So this is pretty close to this value right here. Um, if you get into 95, 95%, okay, now you've got T scores that are one, oh, 96, sorry. I, 196, and so 188, 122, 155, these guys are all gonna be less than 95. These guys are all gonna be really close to the center. Nobody's gonna reject these values, okay? So the <clears throat> this one is so far away that it's above both the 98 and the 99, right? And so this one is always going to be uh, a rejection. These are all going are gonna be so small that these are all gonna be fail to rejects, right? And so the only thing that's left that's pretty close to our 98% um, percent confidence is this uh, 0.22 here, okay? And so because it's right on the edge of the 98, the one tail might reject it and the two tail might um, accept it, right? Uh, the one tail rejected and the other, the two tail test failed to reject, right? Because he's got 2% in each tail and the other guy has just 2% altogether, and so um, that's the difference there, all right? So we're just looking at these and giving it our eyeball best guess, and uh, I don't know that that makes me happy, but I did it and I got the right answer by comparing those, okay, from our reference sheet. Okay, let's try and get 18 and 19 done so that we can finish the page like we've been doing. Uh, contact lens wearer read the, the producer of a new contact lens boasts that their lenses are cheaper than contact lenses from another popular country. Company, not country. She collected some data and then tested the null hypothesis. The old minus the new equals zero, and the old minus the new is greater than zero. So that would make the old ones more expensive and the new ones less expensive. Which of the following would be a type 2 error? Okay. So again, I'm gonna take my null to be true, my null to be false, I'm gonna reject, and then I'm going to fail to reject. And then this is gonna be a type one, this is correct, this is correct, and then this is type two, right? I always draw the chart. And so a type 2 error is when the null hypothesis is actually false and I fail to reject, right? So that the null hypothesis is false and I fail to reject. So if the null hypothesis is false, 
then the old ones actually are more expensive but I determined that they are not so a type 2 would be a fail to reject would be I would say that the old and new have no difference difference when and this is the error they do have a difference okay so it wouldn't be deciding the new lenses are cheaper it wouldn't be deciding that the new lenses are cheaper it would be deciding that the new lenses are not really cheaper when in fact they are oh so that's it so 18 is going to be C all right right there because that was the statement that I wrote below all right that the, that they have no difference that they're not really cheaper uh, when they do have a difference when in fact uh, they actually are cheaper okay uh, a company checking the productivity of its assembly line monitoring monitored a random sample of workers for several days they found a 95% confidence interval for the mean number of items produced daily by each worker was between 23 and 27 which is true well hopefully we're going to say that uh, we are 95% sure that the mean daily worker output is between uh, I mean this is this is our model sentence right here right all of the rest of that stuff is not following the model sentence and so it's not going to be correct all right and so 19 is definitely B um, all the rest of them not model sentences this is the model